Hello friends, I am Nisha Sharma and the topic under discussion today is a character analysis of Christine Linde in Henry Gibson's play A Doll's House. Christine introduced, sometimes given as Mrs. Linden, an old schoolmate of Nora's, Mrs. Christine Linde comes back into Nora's life after losing her husband and mother. She worked hard to support her helpless mother and two younger brothers since the death of her husband. Now, with her mother dead and her brothers being adults, she is a free agent. Pressed for money, Mrs. Linde successfully asked Nora to help her secure a job at Powell's Bank. Ultimately, Mrs. Linde decides that she will only be happy if she goes off with Proxton. She has been introduced as broken, shattered, and unspeakably empty. Christine has lived through a difficult past with a sick mother and two brothers to take care of. Her responsibility towards them and the urgent need for money compels her to break off her relationship with Propstead to marry someone wealthier instead. Her husband and mother both soon pass away and her brothers become independent and capable of handling themselves, leaving her with no one to take care of. Thus, she presently feels unspeakably empty as she has no one to live for anymore. Christine comes to Nora seeking a job and is soon given a position at the bank by Hammer, which coincidentally belongs to Proxy. Supports Nora. Throughout the play, Christine is very supportive friend to Nora and understands her very well. She recognizes that the relationship between Nora and Hammer is one of concealment and subterfuge. She knows about Nora's forgery and the situation she is in. She tries to advise Nora to tell Hammer the truth, as she feels it is the most practical thing to do. When Nora disagrees to do that, she takes the drastic step of trying to convince Crockstead to take back the letter or to write an apology to Emma. In this process, however, she also ends up reuniting with him. Nil, suppose we two shipwrecked people could join forces. She thus finds a person to live for and two children to take care of. A contrast to Nora. Christine in many respects is quite the opposite of Nora. In contrast to Nora, she is blunt, direct, bold, and unafraid. She is not manipulative and does nothing to hide her true feelings. When Nora tells her about her difficulties in life, despite showing empathy towards her, she tells her that she knows so little about the troubles and hardships of life. When Nora remarks that Christine is too proud of her achievement, she shows no hesitance in admitting that she is. Of course, I am proud and glad to know that I was able to make my mother's last days a little easier. She is also very independent and has always worked for her own self. Unlike Nora, who displays a craving towards personal freedom and the fulfillment of her duties to herself, Christine exhibits a strong desire to work for others to have a husband and children to live for. Good judge of character. Christine is also a good judge of character, which is why she understands Nora and the other people around her so well. She is also the only person who sees through Crockster's selfishness and understands him more deeply. She gauzes by Dr. Rank's behavior that he might be insincere and ask Nora, doesn't he rather like saying things to please people? She is very observant of the people around her and often tries to fit missing pieces together by judging people's character. Mrs. Lindy, like Crockstead, also acts as a catalyst 
to bring about the true colors of nora and hammer's relationship she calls out nora for acting like a child and advises her to tell her husband the truth thus mrs lindy is an important character in the story loyal trustworthy helpful honest practical independent and intelligent Christine is a combo of modernity as well as traditionality. Christine, as she is generally known to the other characters, Mrs. Lindy is an old friend of Nora's. She is a woman whose marriage was loveless and based on a need for financial security and who doesn't have any children. She and Crockston had been in love at the time, but he was too poor to support her family. she arrives in town in search of a job in order to earn money and survive independently in this way she is a fairly modern woman towards the end of the play she explains to proxter that she finds joy and meaning in work however in other way she is more traditional she tells both proxter and nora that she is miserable without other people to take care of thereby fitting into the traditional role of women as caretakers and nurturers it is this conviction that causes her to marry rockstar towards the end of the play christine believes in honesty she believes very deeply in honesty and stops rockstar from taking the letter he wrote to towel back thereby ensuring that towel find about nora secret find out about nora secret although this at first seems like a betrayal of nora it turns out to ultimately a decision to nora's benefit as it is after torval finds about finds out about the depth that nora is able to see the true nature of her marriage this twist confirms mrs lindy's belief that honesty is always better than deceit christine is practical and down to earth nora's childhood friend christine linde is a practical and down to earth woman and her sensible world view highlights nora nora's somewhat childlike outlook on life mrs linde's account of her life of poverty underscores the privileged nature of the life that nora leads also we learn that mrs linde took responsibility for her sick parent whereas nora abandoned her father when he was ill christine is as a moral guide to nora christine linde referred to as mrs linde is nora's friend from school prior to the events of a doll's house the two had not seen each other in 10 years Mrs Linde visits Nora in the hope that Nora might ask Torval to give Mrs Linde a job at the bank that he manages. Mrs Linde serves as a moral guide for Nora throughout the play, taking on an almost motherly role. She scolds Nora for going behind Torval's back to obtain the loan, and she discusses discourages Nora's flirtation with Doctor Rain. it is ultimately mrs linde's intervention that forces nora to be honest with torval about the loan mrs linde serves as a foil for nora whereas nora has lived a privileged sheltered life mrs linde has had to face many hardships as a childless widow she has had to work and provide for herself in a world where employment opportunities for women were limited unlike nora who was a beautiful husband and the children who has a beautiful husband and children mrs linde has had to navigate life alone furthermore while nora maintained the illusion of a happy loving marriage christine readily admits to never having loved her husband hers was a marriage of necessity brought on by the need to provide for her mother and siblings mrs linde is the living embodiment of nora's assertion that women constantly sacrifice themselves for their loved ones ironically 
while the privileged nora wants to be independent mrs linde wants someone to care for mrs linde's reunion with proxter sees her moving in the opposite direction of nora readers often view mrs linde's desire to be a caretaker as regressive and oppositional to the feminist themes of nora's story however the key difference is choice just as nora asserts her independent right to pursue her own happiness so too does mrs linde mrs linde has already proven herself to be independent and self sufficient she has learned the lessons that nora hopes to learn now after receiving such a harsh education about the world she chooses to enter into her life with rockstead as an equal mrs linde is not a decorative little squirrel to be spoiled instead she is a fellow survivor combining the wreckage of her life with the wreckage of rockstead in the hopes of improving both of their circumstances through the first two acts of the play christine acts as a foil to nora's character her proactive practical nature contrasts starkly with nora's idealistic dream filled approach to life while nora is brimming with hope working hard to fulfill her duties and maintain the facade of a happy housewife christine represents the women who were not fortunate enough to live the victorian woman's dream in the scene christine reveals to proxter that her marriage to an old wealthy man was driven not by romance but by duty to her suffering mother and underage brothers ever since then mrs linde continues she has emptied her life of luxurious fantasies and taken on various jobs to support her family up until her meeting with proxy it appears that christine is a negative character in comparison to nora while christine has refused to submit to a male figure and has endured many hardships in her inexplicably empty life nora has fulfilled her womanly duties and now is pampered by hammer in a comfortable home in the final act this message is reversed completely and christine turns into a positive foil for nora as christine and crockster share their feelings with one another the former lovers admit to being two shipwrecked people clinging to some wreckage they have both suffered as a result of mrs linde's decision to escape a romantic life with crockster in order to resume assume responsibility for her family consequently they have both learned to become reasonable people as christine approves of crockster's decision not to believe in fine speeches as they reminisce on their difficult life lessons the two choose to reunite and are both thrilled with the idea after crockster's exit christine even joyfully proclaims what a difference at the prospect of leading a life with someone to support and for whom to care the arrangement that the couple agrees upon is a shocking violation to gender rules in the victorian age since christine will be providing their income through her position at hammer's pen through these two characters ipsen indicates that true happiness is not found through material possessions in patriarchal households but through an equal relationship in which the two lovers understand one another in the beginning of their conversation christine claims that proxter never properly understood her in their days of courting this sentiment is echoed by nora later in the play immediately before she abandons her husband christine and proxter represent the healthy relationship that nora comes to realize she lacks in her final conversation with hammer it is safe to assume that nora's duties to herself are the same ones christine has fulfilled through her independent lifestyle in fact the play's famous final line is extremely ambiguous however should the most wonderful thing of all happen to nora in helmet then their relationship will be go christine and proxter's love should the hammers reunite after nora's exit it must be because they have changed enough for their life together to be a real wedlock this can only happen if nora learns to be independent 
like Christine. And if Hammer learns to submit to his wife in the same fashion that Crockster does to his lover. In many ways, Crockster's reunion with Christine serves to transform the audience perspective on happiness and gender role, as it sets the stage for a doll's house controversial finale. Why Christine and Crockster's meeting serves Ibsen's agenda to shock audiences of the time their conversation deceptively acts like a pending resolution to the climax of Nora's financial situation. After Nora reveals to Christine that Crockstead has left a letter to expose her debt to her husband and publicly humiliate the hammers, Christine claims that she has left Crockstead a note to try to amend the situation before Hammer opens the letter. This initially appears to be the climax of the play. As the third act opens with Crockstead going to see Christine at the Hammer's household, while this scene initially seems like Christine's manipulative attempt to convince Crockstead to take back his letter, the audience observes an unanticipated twist when Christine instructs Crockstead not to do so, because the matter must be exposed in order for the Hammer's to have a complete understanding between them. Despite her seemingly malicious actions, Christine has positive intentions for Nora as she aims to liberate her from Paul's happiness. She states to Crockston, a woman who has once sold herself for another man's sake doesn't do it a second time, indicating that she will not sacrifice her personal happiness for her for duty once more. The line may also be interpreted as Christine's refusal to sell herself by driving Nora to do so and suffer through a passionless life for her husband's sake. In his masterful construction of a doll's house, Ibsen has granted Christine and Crockster the scene that would at once resolve the play's obvious conflict about Nora's financial dilemma while subtly drawing attention to Nora's inner conflict and driving the play into its famous cliffhanging climax. The pairing of Christine and Croxton complements the play's message towards gender equality as it depicts a happy ending for a couple that has defied gender roles before the audience witnesses witness the dramatic failure of a conventional patriarchal marriage. Though this scene has not been granted the spotlight of the play's finale, it is essential to understand the impact of the ending as it presents a couple for which the most wonderful thing of all has happened in a very unconventional way. Christine Lindy Nora Hammer's contemporary serves as a direct comparison with Ibsen's heroine by recounting how she denied her rights to love and self-determination by marrying for financial security, Christine foreshadows how Nora will confront a bitter future after learning that her marriage is based on deception. Nora, according to Christine's example, must eventually conclude through her own sufferings that the only way of life which can survive crisis is one based on truthful relationships. The ability for Christine to rebuild her life with Crockstead can be accepted as a note of hope in Nora's case. Perhaps in the years to come, Nora and Torval will also be able to restore their marriage. Thank you.